through phases where it seemed like the spirit was going to really teach me this lesson. So I, I worked at hospice, uh, which uh, as far as terminally ill patients, it's all was around me, was that. And that was very, very powerful. And um, what happened during that experience was I would go in and I, I had to go through like four or five, six weeks of training to be a hospice volunteer. And I was already into this stuff, so I thought, the Spirit's having me do this. This is an assignment. And I would go in there, and I would go through the hallways, and they would all be in their rooms and everything. And I would just let myself be guided, oftentimes to take food and water and so on and so forth. And the funniest thing happened was when I would go into these rooms where there'd be a terminally ill, diagnosed terminally ill patients, dying on the last stages of it too. This was like really far along. I would go in there and I would be in all the glory. I'm in all the glory of God's love. And and these people were then reflections of where my mind was. If they were in a coma, sometimes they would come out right for me, on the spot. Even if their family was there and they'd been in comas for weeks, they would turn and come right out of the coma and they would start talking to me, sometimes alone or even in the company of their, their families and they would do a little expression session with me what they were still guilty about mm -hmm. guilty about leaving their family behind leaving their children behind leaving the world behind and all these wor words would come out of my mouth were versions of you are innocent you did a great job mission accomplished thank you you are loved, you know, boom, boom, it would just come out from the spirit of just, you are innocent. It was just telling them that all the things that they were concerned, many of those were just holding on to the body out of guilt. It was like the mind was making the decision to cling to the body, to like hold on, even though it was, go it was on the very end. And they were, most all of them were asking me for just permission to to know of their own innocence. And I did it. I mean, I launched. I gave them the innocent mission. And, and the funny thing was, I had a very high checkout rate. Because <laughs> instead, of, instead of raising the dead, I have had one of those too, so it did go the other way. But in this case, I would come back the next day and they would say, so and so checked out. And then I would, the ones I would visit would end their life very quickly because they felt the innocence and the only reason they were hanging on was because they felt they were guilty they said that's nonsense you you did a great job and mission accomplished and you know all that stuff I do find sometimes with these terminal ill cases they, they are quite interesting how they play out because it's always about innocence the lesson is innocence and the belief that we've done something wrong seems to manifest you know, in terms of sickness and death in this world, but the teaching is far beyond that. It's teaching that we have an eternal life that we're just unaware of. And all we have to do is forgive all of our illusions that the ego was part of that big trick and that we can wake up from this dream of sickness and death and separation to eternal life. And, and it just makes so much intuitive sense. Every time I've heard people speak about this, I've always said, yeah, yeah, I know something in my heart knows this is the truth. And, and if it's the last thing that I do, I'm going to discover that truth. And I'm going to publish it like Henry David Rose said. I'm going to publish it to all the world. So that's why we talk about this with gatherings, Chautauquas all around the world. We put it all over the internet. <laughs> and we put it out there freely for people to access and to take it in and to apply in their own life. And in most of our talks, while they can get a bit philosophical at times, seemingly, or metaphysical, they're really all about practical application. And I've been really, I've been hushed in humility by seeing this journey about how the Spirit is just showing me our divinity, that we really are divine beings. And that this, these little flesh suits that we wear, you know, aren't, <laughs> aren't really the whole story, you know, they're, they're not the whole story at all.